So welcome back. We've been talking a little bit about subspaces of a vector space. And what I want to do now is introduce a kind of a new uh, um, set, which we've seen in the special case of Rn, and then show that this is an example of a subspace of your vector space. Okay, so we're going to do a special case first. So we're going to take two vectors in a vector space. It doesn't matter which vector space. And we're going to form the span of those two vectors. Now we've done span of vectors in Rn. And you define the span of vectors in an arbitrary vector space in the same way. You can take v1 and v2. And then you're going to do all, scale, all linear combinations of those two vectors. So we're going to do all linear combinations of v1 and v2. So k1 and k2 are constants. We scale, we can scale these vectors and then add them together. So you get a large collection of vectors at the end. You get a big set here. And what we're going to prove is that when you do this, if you start with a collection of vectors and you take the span, you get a big set of vectors, what you end up with is always going to be a subspace of v. So this is nice because this gives us a way to quickly build subspaces. Just take a set of vectors and do all the linear combinations. The end result is a subspace. And let's prove it. All right, so we know what we have to do. We have to check our three conditions. Right? So first of all, the zero vector is inside of the span of v1 and v2 since the zero vector is just zero times the first vector plus zero times the second vector. Okay, so we can always get the zero vector inside of the span. Now let's show that the span is closed under uh, the uh, vector space operation of addition. So we take two vectors. We don't know what they are, but let's call them u and w inside of the span of v1 and v2. Okay, well, what do we know then about uh, u and v. Well, we know that u has to be equal to a1, uh, maybe I won't use a, a1, I'll just use a, a v1 plus b v2, and w is some lo other linear combination of v1 and v2, right? So we have a, b, c, d, and r. But then, u plus v, uh, I guess, sorry, I'm using w, u plus w is equal to the sum of these two vectors. And then you can group vectors together. So you would have a plus c times v1 plus b plus d times v2. And what you're getting here is a new linear combination because a plus d are constants, b plus d are constants. And I feel like I mess, uh, no, that's not a d, that's a c. a plus c is a constant. And so this is a linear combination. So this is inside of the span of v1 and v2. And finally, Let's look at the last condition about being closed under the scalar multiplication. So we're going to let u inside a span of v1 and v2, and c inside of r. Right? Then as just repeating what we had above, we know that the vector u is a combination a linear combination of v1 and v2. And then c times u will be equal to ca times v1 plus cb times v2. And now we again have another linear combination of v1 and v2. So this is inside of the span of v1 and v2. So we checked all the three conditions. They all hold. So what that means is that we have a, vector, a subspace of our original vector space. Okay. Now, if you stare at this for a second, you notice that we didn't actually use anything special about the number two. We could have had one vector and the proof will work the same. We could have had like 10 vectors. We could have had 10 million vectors and the proof would still work the same. So we, do, we have the general case, which is stated right here. If you take 
uh, any vectors, any set of vectors in V, and you form the spanning set of that set of vectors. So what is that? That is all the linear combinations of these vectors. So C1, C2, V2, up to Cp, Vp, where each of these Cis are in R, you get a subspace of your original vector space V. Right? And the proof is all you have to do is generalize the above proof. The reason we're not going to work through all the details is it just becomes a little bit more messy notational-wise. But the idea is the same. The zero vector is in there, it's closed under addition, and it's closed under multiplication. So this is very nice because this allows us to start from any vector space, any collection of vectors, and we can build subspaces using the notion of a spanning set. Okay. And we want to add some terminology here before we move on. So the spanning set of V1, Vp, of V1 through Vp is said to be the subspace spanned or generated by V1 through Vp. And this definition makes sense because once you have the V1 and Vp, you're generating all the other elements inside of your set. And this part here is we want to kind of do this in some ways in reverse. Like suppose that somebody gives you a subspace H, okay? then a spanning set for H is a set of vectors inside of H such that you can write H in terms of the spanning set of vectors, V1 through Vp. So we're, we're kind of given the subspace and then we're asking, can if there is a set of vectors inside of H such that H is the span of those vectors, then we would say that V1 through Vp is a spanning set. So it's clear that when you start with any vectors, the spanning set is a, uh, the space spanned by the vectors is a subspace. It's a little less clear, maybe, that once you have a subspace, you can actually find a spanning set. And in, starting in the next part of today's lecture, we'll look at some special cases where we can actually start with knowing that we have a subspace and figure out which elements generate it. So the idea is we have big sets, but we can find, represent that set by a finite number of pieces of information in most cases. Okay, I will explain this, expand upon this in the next part.